Greetings YouTube, Joe here with Culination Media and welcome back to another episode of The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. This is episode number 63. And in this episode, we're going to be finishing up with all of the barriers that lead into Ganon's castle by uh, completing the uh, light barrier, which is the last one that we need to complete. And then we're going to be heading up Ganon's tower and facing off with Ganondorf himself in this episode. Which means that the next episode is going to be the finale. Alright, so in this room, uh, there's keys all over the place. And um, they are invisible, so make sure that you have the Lens of Truth available. As for the treasure chests that are around the room, the prizes, so to speak, or the um, treasure chests that are not actually traps are the ones that have the keys on them. So if that helps at all. Uh, but I'm just going to open all of them because I just want to show you what's in all of them. The ones that are traps are all the same trap. There's no different kind of trap other than getting frozen. And uh, as for the items that are in the treasure chest, the one in the center of the room after you kill all of the keys is a small key which will help you move forward. Um, and then uh, one of the items is a bundle of arrows. The other is a blue rupee which means it was probably bombs or something like that that I already am uh, stocked up on. And... Apparently that one was a trap as well, and this one should be an item because it had a keys on it. And it is just a recovery heart, which we really didn't need. Well, I guess we did because we got frozen a couple of times, so I guess it evened out. In this room, there's the crest of the royal family on the floor, so that's going to make this pretty easy. We're just going to pull out our Ocarina of Time like the good old days, and uh, that will make a small chest appear to the right. And it will contain a small key, which will allow us to uh, progress a little bit further. Which is also very easy. In this room, it's going to be the last silver puzzle, silver rupee puzzle of the game, I'm pretty sure. I know I said that last time, but I forgot about this one, so hoping I'm not forgetting about another one. And of course, there's these giant boulders that are rolling around the room, which makes my life so much worse, because these things love me, or hate me, I'm not really sure which. Uh, but... I definitely am sure about how I feel about them. I hate them with a passion of a thousand burning suns. Anyway, uh, that was all of my fault. That's... What? That's not even realistic. Okay, well, I got all the silver rupees, and now I can uh, progress through the door. You do have a time limit, but you shouldn't really worry about that because it's kind of a, an excessive uh, time limit. With the lens of truth, you can see that this is a fake wall here. There's also a wall master that you can kill that kind of jumps down on you, as they always do. You can run through the fake wall, and now we've actually reached the real barrier of light. And, oh, yay, I filled up my magic. Sweet. And my arrows are filled up and everything. Good news for us. No, don't hookshot it. Link, what are you doing? Shoot it with a light arrow. And that's going to do it for the last barrier. And it's Roru, who is the Sage of Light. The light barrier is dispelled. Hurry! That's pretty much what all of the sages have said. They pretty much all said the exact same thing. So, nothing new there. But it's Roru. What do you really expect? We don't really have high expectations for him being hip and happening, having cool dialogue. But uh, that's going to be the last of the barriers. And with that, the purple shadow barrier thing, Majiggy, that is blocking us from going higher into the castle is now removed. And we can now uh, enter where that, it looks like a gargoyle mouth, kind of. Uh, but we can now enter there, and that will take us up through the rest of Ganon's castle. Sweet, if only I can find it. Where is it? I'm, of course, I was on like the opposite side of what I needed to be, right? Yes. I went the wrong way, ugh, of course. That's usually what happens to me though, I always go the wrong way. When given two options and the choice is left up to me, I will almost 100% of the time choose the wrong one because I just have a bad sense for those types of things and pretty bad luck as well. Okay, well, once we make it to the bridge, we can now enter where that uh, barrier was and uh, yeah, Ganon's castle. The depths of Ganon's castle. When we first enter, uh, there's a staircase to our left and a bunch of fire keys as well. 
Uh, so kill them in any way that you see fit. You can kill them with arrows, or you can kill them with your sword, and it doesn't really matter what you do, as long as they're dead. And there's one more. Come down here, I know you want to try to attack me. Oh, there's two more. Three more? I don't even... I can't see. Where did all of you keys come from? Oh, there's three more. Yikes. Alright, well that does it for two of them, and... Where'd that last one go? No! Why won't you make my life easy? Ah. Uh, and he, of course he wants to fly into the fire. But I said no! And... I think that may be all of them. Did I really not have to kill all of them? Oh no, there's another one up here. And, of course, he hits me first. Link, what are you doing? You're just slicing at nothing. Link has problems. Alright, well, once we go through the door, uh, we will be met with a couple of Dinolfos. And the door is locked behind us. Uh, but with the bigger on sword, we will be able to make quick work of these Dinolfos and kill them in three hits each or two jump slashes. There's one. And... No, Link, stop trying to hit nothing. You actually have to hit the enemies for them to die. You can't just slice randomly at invisible enemies and your imaginary friends to make all the baddies go away. It doesn't work like that. This is real life, man. This is the Nintendo 64. I have no idea what I'm talking about. Let's just go up the stairs through the door and another uh, iron bar is locked behind us. Or locking the door behind us. In the middle of this room, there is a treasure chest encased in flames and we are met with two Stalfos that we have to defeat. Uh, which, as you know by now, really uh, is, makes it not that difficult of a battle when it comes to the uh, having the Vigoron sword. And also, you don't need to defeat them both uh, within that certain time limit uh, or else one will come back. You don't have to deal with that. You can just kill each one of them uh, as you see fit and as you're at your own speed. That will unlock both of the doors and it will also uh, allow the flames that surround the treasure chest to subside. So judging by the color of the treasure chest, it is the boss key. So now we can enter Ganondorf's chambers and I'm assuming that the correct way is this way. That just seems to be right. More stairs yet again. And uh, now in the background, you can faintly hear an organ playing, which is kind of creepy. All right, in this room, we're going to be met with two iron knuckles at the same time, which can be difficult. Again, if you don't have the uh, bigger on sword, this can be difficult. But um, yeah, I'm going to use the master sword because I am just that cool. I'm also going to use bombs because you don't need them for the battle with Ganondorf. So feel free to use... Uh, all of the bombs that you want as well. Well, not so much arrows, though. Die. I'm hitting both of them at the same time, which is awesome. And, of course, once you get uh, their armor down to a certain point, they will start running after you, uh, which can make things a little bit difficult, especially when they're not waiting to attack you. Uh, they will not take turns. They don't fight nice. They don't fight fair. Uh, they're all about killing Link, and killing Link now, and they do a lot of damage. Uh, if you do have the Great Fairy upgrade, though, uh, they will do, I think, only two hearts of damage instead of four each time. So that part is nice. Um, but with the bigger on sword or uh, just awesome skill, those iron knuckles will go down fairly quickly. All right. So now we need the boss key, which we have. We can enter this room here. And, oh, looks like we can climb this. Climb, Link, climb to the top. I wasn't supposed to climb up here, was I? Oh, I have a bad feeling that I'm not supposed to be climbing up here. No, because that just leads to the ceiling. I don't want to go up to the ceiling. Link, stop screaming, you little girl. All right, so the only door that we can actually go through is this one on the right, but there's a couple of pots down here. And you can destroy them to get uh, arrows. I don't know why a green rupee is in there. It makes no sense. We have no use for green rupees at this point. But whatever. Most of the time they won't have bombs because you don't need bombs past this point. Uh, but whatever. Alright, up the stairs again. And the organ is getting louder. It's very suspicious. It's not very suspicious at all, actually. We know exactly where that organ is coming from. And we know exactly who is playing it. One last door to go through. Here we go. Who was playing that organ? They're actually pretty good at it. 
And so, it begins. There is Zelda floating in her uh, black magic encasing above the organ at which Ganondorf is sitting. Ganondorf himself and our Triforce is activating because all three are in the same spot at the same time, which I don't think has happened since the Triforce has uh, actually split since Ganondorf entered the Secret Realm. Sacred Realm, not secret. Well, I mean, it's a secret too, but you know what I'm saying. All right, the Triforce parts are resonating. They're combining into one again. The two Triforce parts that I could not capture on that day seven years ago. I didn't expect they would be hidden within you two. Oh, that laugh. And now, finally, all the Triforce parts have gathered here. They sure have. And this could just be a disaster waiting to happen. These toys are too much for you. They're not toys. I command you to return them to me. And he activates his Triforce of Power. Oh, it's some kind of crazy dark magic here. Culination, I can't help you. Because of the waves of darkness, I can't get close. I'm sorry. So what good are you if you don't help me in the last boss fight? Really, Navi? You are useless. And so it begins, the battle against Ganondorf. Immediately, he's going to pound the floor. And a large section of the floor is going to uh, separate from the rest of the battlefield. Just like against Phantom Ganon, he's going to be shooting these balls of energy at you. And you can slice them right back at him. Um, and you kind of have to figure this out on your own because you don't have Navi to help you, obviously. Uh, these volleys can last a really, really long time. And when he does uh, get stunned by it, you need to shoot him with a light arrow. That's the only thing that's going to stun him. Then you can jump onto the platform and slice and slice and slice away until he uh, gets up again. How did I miss that? That was really stupid. If you do fall down here, there are a bunch of jars uh, inside of which you can find uh, recovery hearts, um, magic, arrows, things like that. All the things that you're going to need. Uh, you probably are going to want to bring along blue potions and fairies. Uh, blue potions can be found in Kakariko Village, um, and that's at the potion shop where we got the odd mushroom from that lady, the old lady. Anyway, she sells you uh, blue potions for 100 rupees a piece, and it does uh, give you your magic and health back at the same time, so those are very useful, especially because uh, light arrows are so necessary and so magic draining. Um, so, I would recommend bringing some of those. I, myself, have brought two here. I also recommend staying in the corner during this battle because the uh, corner is the only... These corner areas that are colored differently are the only areas that cannot be knocked uh, out of the playing field. When Ganondorf hits any of the other uh, blocks along uh, the perimeter of the room, they will fall and make things so much more difficult. Uh, so, as long as you stay in the corner, he shouldn't knock any of the blocks through the floor, and uh, that will just make your life so much easier. Uh, and he will still attack you, so uh, everything can fall into place. Once he gets stunned again, let's see, there we go. Light arrow, don't worry about uh, trying to target him, because that just is a waste of time. Uh, chances are you're not going to be able to get that many hits in. Uh, you can try to get a jump slash in if you can time it right, and that was not what I wanted to do. Ah, uh, not good. If you don't have uh, the Great Fairy's uh, defense upgrade, Ganondorf's attack will do a ridiculous amount of damage to you. Um, and you will die in maybe like four or five hits, even if you have all of the uh, hearts uh, available in the game. Uh, as you're jumping, you can pull out your sword and press B to do a jump slash uh, and kind of hit him on the way down to get an extra hit in and it also does double damage. You can also use the uh, Dooku uh, stick to do more damage to the Master Sword, um, but uh, I have the bigger on sword, and I don't want to do that because it's kind of cheap. When he charges up this massive attack to shoot at you, you can actually shoot him with the light arrows instead of just waiting for it to pass and then going back to the energy volley. So he should do that again. There we go. If you get him right before he releases it, you can stun him before he even gets a chance to get the attack off. And 
and you can go back to slicing him, and this battle should be almost over, actually, because we've gotten a lot of damage on him here. Well, I'm thinking maybe one more sequence. All right, he's going back. That was really bad timing. Crap. He's going back to the sequence, or not the sequence, he's going back to the old uh, energy ball volley trick here. And uh, in the grand scheme of things, Ganondorf really doesn't have that many uh, options when it comes to attacking you, so if you can master uh, avoiding his two main attacks, you'll be good to go. Especially if you stay in the corner of the room. Make that jump link, thank you. And come on, you're so close. Nah, not quite. He had a little bit more health than what I thought. Hopefully this battle does end soon though, because I'm running out of magic and I do not want to um, have to use one of my potions, although I may have to. And I don't know, I don't think I destroyed all the pots down at the bottom, so I should be okay for now. There we go, he's stunned again. That's probably going to be one of the last light arrows I can use, maybe one more. But turns out he only needed one more hit, and that's going to do it for the King of Evil. Ganondorf is defeated. The great evil King Ganondorf, beaten by this kid. Oh, he's not happy, and he coughs up blood, which turns out to be green in this version. Originally, it was red, but they changed it uh, because Nintendo thought it was too gruesome. Now he's glowing, and oh, what the hell are you doing, Ganondorf, you crazy bastard? All the windows are shattering, and oh, he's going to try to take us down with him. That was an awesome fight. I love this game. And with that, Ganondorf collapses right in front of us, and now he's just lying there in a heap, and uh, Zelda will now be freed from the uh, dark magic that was encasing her in this purple crystal. Finally, Zelda is free, but we're not home free by any means. Oh, she looks pissed. Ganondorf, pitiful man. Without a strong, righteous mind, he could not control the power of the gods. And dot, 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 oh no, dot, dot, dot is never a good sign, especially in video games, and neither is a shaking screen. It looks like the tower is about to collapse on itself. Culination, listen to me. This tower will collapse, and I just said that, Zelda, why don't you listen to me? With his last breath, Ganondorf is trying to crush us in the ruins of the tower. We need to hurry and escape. So this is going to be our next objective. Please follow me. So we have to follow Zelda and accompany her out of the tower, and we only have three minutes to do so, so uh, we don't really have a lot of time, considering it took a lot longer than three minutes for us to uh, get up to the top of the tower to begin with. Three minutes really isn't that much time to get uh, down from the tower uh, before it kills us. Okay, so... Uh, we do need to keep Zelda close by because she is the one that's going to be opening the doors that have the bars in front of them, like so. Uh, so, uh, where are you, Zelda? Where did you go? Oh, there you go. Okay, so, yeah, the key is staying close to her because she won't move if you're not near her. Uh, and she will take you to the right doors, you don't have to worry about that, so essentially you're just following her. I would also recommend using Nehru's Love here if you do not have the, uh, defense. Uh, of the great fairy. Ah, don't, why did you target Zelda there? Stupid. I didn't even press that button. Anyway, like I was saying, if you don't have uh, Nehru's, not Nehru's love, if you don't have uh, the defense upgrade from the great fairy, I do recommend using Nehru's love here. While it does use magic, you will have an opportunity to get it back if you really want to, uh, but these falling rocks can do a lot of damage to you if you get hit by a bunch of them. And there's some that are just inevitable for you to get hit by because, um, they continue falling throughout this entire uh, scene, both inside and outside. So no, Link, why did you jump off there? Curse you, auto jump. Oh, God. He just wants to jump. Okay, well, as long as he doesn't jump off the tower, that's all I want from you, Link. Okay, just don't commit suicide, man. All right, in this room, uh, Zelda, I believe, is going to get trapped. Yeah, in a ring of fire. And now we have to defeat two Stalfos, and we still only have two minutes to get out of here, so which means we have much less time to defeat these Stalfos. I recommend bringing uh, the Vigoron Sword here, and of course now you're going to be block happy, right? Come on. This shouldn't take too long. You should be able to defeat them within about 30 seconds or so. 
Um, and I suggest being aggressive and just keep attacking them because that will cause them to eventually try to strike back. And when they do, you can uh, get in between their defenses. Then uh, Zelda will drop some hearts when she's freed so you can uh, heal yourself if necessary. And now we can follow her through the door here. Back outside we go. Please don't jump off, Link. Oh, goodness. I get nervous every time you leave the ground. We're getting there. We're getting there. We've got about half the time expired now. We have a minute and a half left to go. So what are you doing? You're just running around in circles. Don't you know where we're supposed to be going? I feel like you're just guessing. If I find out this is all guesswork, we end up dying. I'm going to kill you. I'm going to bring you back to life and kill you. So... Oh, shut up, Zelda. I like how she gasps every time you get hurt by something. Wait, where did you go? Did you not follow me down here? Really? Okay, so I guess, uh, lesson learned there. Do not run too far in front of her, because she'll just stop and stand there like a moron if you do that. Make sure you keep her close by, as if she were to be on a leash. There's a redead out here, which will inevitably scream at you on your way out. Uh, to cost you a few seconds, but I wouldn't worry about it. Just keep going. It should only be able to get you once, so it's not that bad. And I believe this is the last section right here, so uh, the biggest problem that is possible is uh, the Stalfos battle. That If that uh, takes you longer than about 45 seconds, you're in trouble. Alright, so we've made it down to the bottom of the tower, and uh, apparently just in time, as in true video game and movie fashion and uh, the tower is just finishing collapsing here as the towers are falling over and the bridges are collapsing all kinds of good stuff and uh, before we know it Ganon's castle is going to be no more and we'll be standing in the midst of the ruins and there goes the tower itself and it's just literally collapsing upon itself going straight into the ground, which is an unusual way for a tower to uh, collapse. Physics would say that it would have to tilt one way or the other instead of just completely collapsing upon itself. The only way that were to be the case would be if something that it, it just could not support its weight, and the weight was perfectly balanced so that it didn't tilt either way, but let's not talk about physics here because this is The Legend of Zelda. This is also the Nintendo 64, and this is also like 1998, so... Yeah. I can't believe this game was made in the uh, late 90s. That seems like forever ago. It's over. It's finally over. Is it, Zelda? Is it really over? Is it, Culination? I'm sorry I couldn't help you in the battle before. Shut up, Navi. No one cares what you have to say. I didn't care before. I definitely don't care now. Oh, but something made a really weird sound over in the ruins of the castle. Mm, that could be anything. But anyway, I'm going to stop here, guys. In the next episode, we're going to finish out the game, um, and it's going to be the finale. Uh, we actually have one more thing that we need to do, and then uh, we'll watch the credits. Thank you very much for watching, folks, and please stay tuned for the finale, episode number 64. Game on.